Just imagine it, seven kids and every one of them a boy. You'd give up trying for a girl, wouldn't you? Well, not Andrew and Jodie McMahon. They wanted a daughter so badly, they decided to have one more go. But this time, there was no rolling the dice. Andrew and Jody headed overseas where it's legal to choose the sex of your baby. Gender selection is banned here and often condemned as a first step towards designer babies. But for the McMahons, it's nothing short of a miracle. Tumut in country New South Wales is a natural playground, a boy's own paradise. In fact, it's such a great place to bring up boys. Andrew and Jody McMahon have had seven sons. Nothing gentle about these boys. No. Is no, they're not gentle at all. <laughs> this remarkable, supersized family is testosterone central. Meet 17 year old Luke, 14 year old Aiden, Josh 13. Billy! Billy! <laughs> Billy 11, Cody 7, Go, Daddy. and 2 year old Declan. They really are their own little army, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> right now, come on. Go! But even with this little army of men, something's been missing for 38-year-old Jody and 42-year-old Andrew. They've tried and tried for that elusive daughter, even turning to natural remedies. We had tried all the myths and fables. Oh yeah, and we all tried the all those lifestyles. tales. What are some of them? There's the diets, and it's a high calcium sort of a diet, no salt diet. And then there was the really tight wearing of the underwear <laughs> for Andrew, not me. <laughs> but nothing worked. After Jodie discovered she was pregnant with her sixth son, her desperation for a daughter became overwhelming. When I found out I was having another boy, I was really upset, really upset. Did you expect to feel that way? No. No. You're getting upset now. I know. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. You just sh I shouldn't feel like that. You should be grateful and happy. But um, I did. A week in and I was good. It was, it was good. It was fine. Andrew, were you disappointed at all? Not at all, no. They're all, uh, all top kids. Yeah, they are really top kids. I wouldn't put any of them back. How many have a mate? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Denied nature's helping hand. I'll just have cheese on first. Jody, a pet groomer, and Andrew, a gym owner, turned to science, an incredible process called gender selection. Here's how it works. Like IVF, an embryo is created in a test tube. But gender selection goes one step further. A chromosomal check can tell if the embryo is a boy or a girl. Doctors then only transfer into the mother's womb the embryo of the chosen gender. The only problem, it's banned in Australia. You're the dream maker. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm more of the facilitator. I mean, I think Jody's the dream maker. So, 18 months ago, Jody and Andrew went to California to seek the help of this man. Dr. Daniel Potter from the Huntington Reproductive Center. Part of the reason for me being here is to help people connect with their destiny. And she's been trying to have a daughter for like the last, I don't know how many kids. And at some point they just said, look, I mean, we gotta do something to make this happen. And so she's the one who flew out to the United States and went through this whole crazy, complicated process Oh, I can do the other one. And this crazy, complicated process worked. Made in America, Little Addison. Off to the bar. Off to the bar. <laughs> Jodie and Andrew's first daughter was born in May last year. It was just so different. It was just a dream come true. Like, and it was just, I just had to keep pinching myself that it was, that it had happened really, I guess. Again, you're tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I'm just happy. Just was really happy, I guess. Josh, you got to talk to her. 
Clearly, these brothers love having a sister. I'll give it a kiss. Will you hold her then? It's a she. But the family planning isn't over yet. As often happens with IVF, when Addison was created, so was another embryo, another female, another potential life, and technically, Addison's twin, frozen and stored in America. And now the McMahons are going back to get her. Do you think of this embryo as an embryo? No, not really. Think of it as a sister. Because, yeah, we say we're going to go and get our sister, like to the boys. I call it a frosty, though, because <laughs> she's on ice. OK, so why are you guys going to America? Because hmm? we're getting another baby. <laughs> what sort of baby are you getting? Girl. A, a girl. Do you know how you're going to get this little baby girl? Uh, I think they put an egg in Mum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fried egg or? <laughs> a scrambled egg. <laughs> Everyone here. From Tumut to Los Angeles, the whole family is going to get frosty. How many bags are we checking in today? Ah. I've got no idea. <laughs> this is no small journey at no small cost. Their priceless daughter and quest for another has so far set them back $50,000. Do you watch? Here comes another one. Why, hello. Hey, How are you guys? How are you? Good. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so this is Addison. Yes, this is Addison. Well, welcome. Welcome to you, back where you were made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> For Jodie, Dr Potter is a hero, but he thinks she's the one with oh all the courage. Because if it wasn't for, you know, Jodie's tenacity and seeking this out and making this happen, uh, you know, this little individual wouldn't exist. Right. So this is where your baby is. Yeah. This is the in vitro fertilization laboratory. They call this the nursery, home to 10,000 frozen embryos. So this is Frosty's home. But Jodie and Andrew are interested in just one. So here she is. Well, and she's at the tip of this tube right here. Submerged in liquid nitrogen still. So you guys want to say anything to her? It's very Couldn't daunting. Couldn't you go something, something better than an old coffee cup? <laughs> Tomorrow, if all goes well, Frosty will be one step closer to life. If the embryo survives thaw and we transfer it, the embryo is going to have about an 80% chance of attaching. So you're close, but it's not 100%. No. Addison wasn't 100% yeah. either. But there was no chance of Addison being conceived using this controversial procedure in Australia. It was stopped by the National Health and Medical Research Council in 2005. And the council's Dr Sandra Hacker wants it to remain off limits. But what is it that's unethical about gender selection? I think that it's essentially about commodifying a child, that I want a child that is this particular sort of child and what's to stop the parents saying, well, I can now choose a girl and I'd like one with blonde hair and blue eyes and to be very intelligent. And the issues of selection can be seen at some level as a slippery slope. Is it fair to deny a couple that is only interested in gender selection because of the hypothetical what-ifs of blue eyes, blonde hair, etc.? Well, I don't think the slippery slope argument is the only one here and that the right to passage into life shouldn't be dependent on whether you're a male or a female. This is not like, you know, in China where, you know, they perform gender selection through infanticide. Dr Potter sees about 15 Australian couples a month who he says simply want to balance their big families, whether they want boys or girls. But for much of the world, that choice is outlawed considered the first step to gender imbalance. Considering that this technology is banned in many parts of the world, does that make you guys the wild, wild west? No, I mean, this is not the wild, wild west. The, what you're seeing here is the future. 
I mean, what you guys, you guys are the, you guys are in the past. You guys are the wild, wild west. This is the future. This is, this is the way adults behave. further from Tumut than here, could you? Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> For Jodie and Andrew, all they want is another healthy baby girl, and they're just hours away from trying to make that happen. So how are you feeling? Uh, pretty relaxed, but just a little bit nervous. What are you nervous about? That it won't work. And how are you feeling, Andrew? Excited. Yeah. This is D-Day. Yeah, the day of no return. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you ready to be pregnant again? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, always ready. Always ready. Yeah. So I have incredible news. Excellent. So we have one perfect embryo. Yeah. It's just awesome. Yes. <laughs> so. This is the uterus right here. And so we're going to be putting the embryo. I'm ready for the embryo, Rose. This is the moment of potential life. And it only takes a moment for Dr. Potter to transfer Frosty to Jody's womb. So Frosty's in, that little dot. I'm gonna hold the catheter still for just a moment. Now we're gonna withdraw it. And there we go. That's it. <sighs> That's it. Now all their hopes rest on this little embryo surviving. Good luck. Thank you. If we can bring this one back to visit, we will. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Yeah. Are you feeling pregnant? Not quite. But technically you are, aren't you? Yeah, technically, yeah. I talk about an unromantic way of making a baby. It is, <laughs> it is isn't it? Yeah, I think I prefer the, uh, the roses and the box of chocolates. <laughs> Soft music, a couple of cigarettes. <laughs> For Jodie and Andrew, their fate will unfold over the next nine months. They've played with science, now it's up to Mother Nature to deliver their precious second daughter. How are you going to explain to Addison how she came into this world and, and if you're lucky enough with Frosty, will you explain to her how she came into the world? Yeah. 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 You know, we'll tell them how they, how they came about. She's still a, a part of us and she came from a part of us. It's just the way that she was mixed together, I suppose. And you will give her another name, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we might. And as we go to air, the great news is that Jodie is now eight weeks pregnant. As for a new name for Little Frosty, Andrew and Jodie are still working on it. Coming up. We're trying to show people what exorcism is. I call it generation. There's nothing like staring down a demon. That's next on 60 Minutes.